Thanks so much for being with us today. We are joined now, as promised, as we've been talking about, by our very special guest. She's a celebrity chef. She's a cooking show host. She's won Daytime Emmy Awards, and she's published 14 cookbooks. Everyone, the queen of country cooking, Paula Dean. Good morning, Paula. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Amy. I hope y'all are having a wonderful day. It has been a wonderful day, and we're so glad you're with us. It is truly an honor to have you on the show today. Well, thank you so much, Greg. You know, I said any day that we wake up on the right side of the dirt, it's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good day. Now, It's a good day. I, I have a question that I would like to, to start off here with that as, you know, I, I am a cook myself, and I, I'm curious to know. If you can think back to, like, your your youth, when you first started cooking, when you really started using a stove and doing real cooking, I'm sure somebody was standing over your shoulder teaching you how to do that. Who was that, and how much of their style of cooking is a part of what made you famous? Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, the first meal I cooked, no one was standing over my shoulder, believe it or not. Really? I'm sure, I'm sure uh, there was many phone calls, though. For me to get that meal on the table mm -hmm. <laughs> to my grandmother and my mother, and uh, I, I have to tell y'all, I had my grandmother, my mother's mother, lived to be ninety-one, and she and my grandfather were in the restaurant and lodging business, and my grandmother was truly one of the finest Southern cooks I have ever faced, and she could do everything from from backing a big sea turtle. They lived in Florida, so, I mean, it was nothing for her to back turtles and, you know, to make her turtle soup with, uh, or she could make a pie. It just did not matter. She had so much kitchen sense. And my mother, her daughter, uh, only lived to be 44 years old. And my mother was a wonderful cook as well, but I just didn't have that long with her. But... I, I remember as a young woman, I would go pick up my grandmother, and I would go to the grocery store and just say, Grandma, I want you to show me everything. And we did a lot of canning and freezing together. I, I just had so many happy years in that kitchen with that amazing uh, Irene Paul. She was an amazing, strong woman. And uh, she taught me so so much. And is in her fact, is her style of cooking in your cooking today? Oh yes, yes definitely. Uh, some things are different. Like Grandma, uh, say for her fried green tomatoes and her fried okra, she always used meal. Mm -hmm. Well, my mother used flour, and to me, my mother's cooking was uh, so much better than my grandmother's as far as things like that. So, you know, I, t I picked up where my mother left off with the flour and such. But uh, I really owe it all to my grandmother. And I'll never forget, 26 years ago, uh, Greg and Amy, I called my grandmother. And uh, I said, Grandmama, I have finally figured out what I'm going to do with the rest of my life. I'm going to start a business, and I'm going to call her the bag lady. And I'm going to make these wonderful little lunches, and I'm going to pimp my two sons out into office buildings <laughs> with these lunches. And the phone was it just went quiet. And because I had, you know, I had not even taken a breath while I was telling her all my plans and mm -hmm. thoughts. And uh, I finally said, Grandmama. Grandmama, are you there? And all of a sudden, that voice came through the line, and she said, Have you lost your damn mind? <laughs> <laughs> and what did you say to her? I said, Probably so, Grandmama, but the apple doesn't fall too far from that tree, now does it? But <laughs> she had been in that business, and she knew how hard it was. Uh, so she thought I was crazy, but, you know, she didn't live to see my restaurant. She did not live that long. 
uh, not too, too terribly long. She had to go into a nursing home and and uh, never got to see it. But, you know, I swear she's looking now, though. Paula, you used the phrase kitchen sense, and I like that. And I yes. will be honest with you, I don't have any. I I do a show called Mid Mornings with Amy, and a part of that show we, we talk about, or I talk about with our listeners, cooking struggles that I have because I'm trying to start cooking more at uh-huh. home, uh-huh. and I struggle with it. And honestly, I don't like to do it. So what would be some cooking tips that you would give people like myself who don't have a lot of kitchen sense and who don't really enjoy cooking but yet know we need to cook more at home? Mm. Mm. Well, see, I just can't imagine. I can't phantom that, uh, Amy, because to me, my kitchen, if if I'm stressed, uh, that's where you go for relief. My husband knows just as good. Uh, A couple of years ago, he came into the kitchen and there were eight cakes on our counter. Eight cakes. Therapy cakes. Therapy cakes, honey. <laughs> yeah. And he said, Paula, are you trying to kill me? <laughs> <laughs> and see, it's it's the exact opposite for me. I get stressed um, out in the kitchen where it's therapeutic and relaxing for well, you. Why, why do you think it stresses you, Amy? Well... If I, if I were being honest with you, and I will be honest with you, I enjoy everything being clean and in order. So when I'm trying to cook oh, something okay. and I make a mess, I have to stop, clean up the mess, and then it's just so many things going on. And I cannot enjoy cooking for fear of making a mess. And, okay, and well, here, here's the answer So what, what, what should I do? What can Are I do? Are you married? No. Are you married? You're not married. No. Okay, when you cook a meal, do you usually do it for someone? Usually, usually, but sometimes when I do come home, I, I like to cook for, for myself, one person, and a lot of people do that, for, cook for one person, but usually I don't cook for a group of people. It's usually one to three people. Yes. Well, you know, I, I find it hard to cook for one person. I'll find myself, if my husband's working that week and he works crazy, crazy hours, You know, I'll eat a bowl of cereal or make me a sandwich, you know, something just really quick. Uh, So to me, I I find that very hard to do. But, you know, my grandmother and my Aunt Peggy, who is fixing to be 86 years old, she cooks every day for herself. And I'm talking about fine meals. I'm not talking about quick things. No convenience food. No peanut butter sandwiches. No. She gets in there and she makes her a meatloaf or she makes her crab cakes, you know, but it's it's a fine meal. And my grandmother did the same thing. Uh, you know, I would go to her house and there'd be fried chicken and fresh pole beans on the stove. And uh, so those two women, my grandmother amazed me and my Aunt Peggy is still amazing me the way they do that so my hat is off to you girls that can do that but uh have a friend over invite a friend for dinner and and give them the dishwashing and cleaning up part so all you can concentrate on is just your is cooking. the cooking yes yeah, so that's a wonderful way to solve that tell them you'll feed them if they'll be the cleaner upper <laughs> <laughs> i may have to try that Paula, but, uh, get, it, you know, it, it's, it's, and of course, the more you do it, Amy, the better you get at it. And you can get real, real comfortable, just real comfortable. And I actually want to have one follow up to that, but we'll have yeah, to pause for yeah. just a moment because of the weather alert. Yeah, the, the, oh, okay. e, the EAS is going off right now. You, you can't prop hear it, maybe, but it's, it's no, telling us. I, I, I can't hear it, Greg. Yeah, well, just, just give us a second here. It, okay. It'll, it'll best. Hey, I'll tell you a quick story on Amy while we're waiting on it to pass. Yeah. Amy was going to make taco meat, and it said to brown the oh, meat. Oh, this is unnecessary. This is, this is the worst ever. She, and she's going to brown. This is the kind of story she tells on the air. And she was going to brown the meat, so she put water in the skillet and put a frozen pound of hamburger in the skillet of water to try and brown it. Is that the best thing you've ever heard or what? Because I, I should have I should have put the, the meat in the refrigerator <laughs> and not yeah. the freezer. Yes, yeah, but, but we, you know microwave. <laughs> <laughs> Most microwaves now have a defrost on them, and I've found that they work pretty good. 
you know, that'll get you started. You just have to be careful not to cook the edges of it. But I, I've, um, learned, I've learned through trial and error. I, I'm, I'm slowly getting better. But, honey, I have heard a with, uh, worse stories than that. Uh, in fact, I, I talked about uh, on the podcast today that I was doing, uh, I was getting ready to do a catering job, and it was for like 40 people. And uh, one of the requests was potato salad. And I'm, when I was in the restaurant, nobody made my potato salad but me. I just felt like nobody could do it to suit me, so that was just one of my jobs. And I sent the big old stainless steel bowl down to the young man that uh, worked the salad station, and I said, uh, son, put me about 12 uh, eggs in this potato salad. I went back by to pick it up, and they were 12 raw eggs floating <laughs> on top of that potato salad. <laughs> Well, speaking. I wanted to kill that young man. I said, son, how many times did your mother serve you potato salad with raw eggs on top of it? <laughs> Zero is the answer. Zero. Well, I... So, you know, uh, I learned that day that you have to be specific. It was my own fault because I did not say uh, and, and, and Paula, I'm so glad you say that because a lot of recipes, whether it's on a package of meat or a box, a lot of those recipes, whoever writes them, assumes that everyone has kitchen sense and they need to write those recipes to be very specific. You Maybe to the, say unfold the meat before yeah, you put it in a skillet. The, yeah, the pack of taco seasoning assumes that you know what brown a pound of hamburger means, but not everybody yeah. does. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I found that out when I was writing my first cookbook. The very first cookbook I wrote, uh, I wrote was uh, favorite recipes from Paula Dean and her friends, and from the lady and her friends, I think it was. And uh, it had been out like two weeks when a publishing house bought it. But I didn't have any trouble writing my first cookbook. All I did was sit down in the floor, dump out my big old brown sack from the grocery store that had all my grandmother and mother's recipes and all handwritten on an envelope or a scratch of paper. And uh, I just dumped that out, and there was my cookbook. And uh, when it when the uh, publishing house bought it, they said, uh, we're going to have to really work hard on this book because, you know, I'd say throw the meat and cover it with water. You know, uh, no specifics. And they told me at that time, Paula, you have got to assume that the person that's going to prepare this recipe has never even walked in a kitchen. You have to be so explicit with your instructions. So you are right, Amy. You can't assume anything. I agree. You can't assume anything. And the second... The remake of my book was so much harder to do than my first one. And still, one day I got a call after that book came out, uh, and this lady called me in the middle of lunch, and, honey, it was balls to the wall. It was so busy, and like 12, 15, I was called to the phone, and this lady said, she said, I hate to bother you, but I'm trying to make your squash casserole and I can't fit this squash in to the measuring cup. (laughs) Once again, it was my fault. I didn't say sliced. (laughs) (laughs) I I, I feel her her pain. The the struggle is real. Listen, I screamed during that call. We laughed and we laughed uh, because I didn't. I didn't tell them to slice the squash. <laughs> and can't you just see her trying to hammer a whole squash into a mission? Uh, I can, yes. Well, Paula, I've, I've got another question for you, and, and yeah. I, I, I don't want to take too much of a serious turn here. But uh, one thing, you know, and, and, and I, I hope we can talk about this, that a lot of people don't know is that uh, a long time ago, you suffered from some panic attacks and agoraphobia, and you Ooh. used cooking to help cope with that, right? How did, the, how did that happen? 
Greg, that was the only place that I felt truly safe and distracted. Uh, I did. I went on a 20-year ride with agoraphobia, and, you know, I'm not the, I'm not the brightest bulb in the socket. I'll be the first one to admit it. Uh, sometimes I'm slow getting things, and it took me 20 years of self-treatment uh, to, to move me out of that. But uh, my daddy died at 40 years old, and I was 19, and that was what started him. I knew what started him. Uh, because my daddy was my hero, and my mother was my best friend. Mm-hmm. And my mother followed him in death at 44. So, I mean, my brother and I were orphaned at, at young ages. And uh, it, along with them went all of my security. And I was, I just lived in fear, Greg. Just everything scared me to death. And I had been this outgoing girl that was just wanting to be in the middle of everything to this young girl that was frightened to death of everything and trying to raise two babies and a 16-year-old brother, you know, trying to finish mm-hmm. what mother and daddy had started with him. And uh, But it took me 20 years, 20 years. And, of course, there was no money for for uh, to see a psychiatrist or a psychologist, uh, there was just never was was money, you know, to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, uh, at forty years old, uh, my ex husband, my children's father, had moved us to Savannah, and I was in a deep depression. I thought I'll never be able to go home to see my friends and. What little family I had left, you know, I'd just never be able to get there on my own. And uh, one morning I got up, and it was like I had gotten up and walked over to the light switch and flipped a light switch. Uh, And that serenity prayer went through my head. You know, a prayer I had heard most of my life. Mm -hmm. But that particular morning, it made sense to me, Greg. It was as clear as that bell ringing that uh, I had to accept things that I had no control over, which was my mother and father's death. Uh, And I had to try to have the courage to change the things that I could. And please, God, let me know the difference. And I think between those two things. Personally, that's the most important part of that. Let you know the difference. Yes. And I had been trying to change my husband for years. You know, I was trying to fix things there, which brought on even more insecurities and fear. And, uh, you know, I accepted my mother and daddy's death that morning. I accepted my death, my children's death. You know, it uh, it was inevitable. That, that was life uh, because it was death that put such a fear in me. Uh, it all stemmed from mother and daddy's early premature death. and uh, But that day I started getting better. I started getting better. It was not an overnight thing, you know, but at least it made me aware. Paula, I have a couple and of... I uh, took control of my, my life. And we're, we're glad you did. I have a couple of phrases that I'm going to... Uh, read to you. There are phrases okay. that relate to Paula Dean, and you just uh, tell me the first few few things that come into your mind when I say them, okay? Okay. The first one is the Bag Lady Foundation. Mm, I love her. Uh, the Bag Lady Foundation is my foundation that we started in 2012, and it is to help women, mainly women, uh, and their children. Uh, I wanted some way, I I had been down that road, and I wanted to do something to help other women for whatever reason they needed a helping hand. So it has allowed me, Amy, to go to, um, uh, to um, oh my gosh, all of a sudden the words left, nonprofit organizations. 
uh, that are housing these women, you know, they're trying to get out of an abusive relationship or just down on their luck and trying to figure out, you know, what what to do, how to take control of their life. And so I'm able to go around the country, you know, and do that in these no, uh, nonprofit organizations, and it's it's um, it gives me a very good feeling. It's another outlet maybe, outlet for you. Yes, maybe I've been able to help, you know, clear up somebody's thinking or. You know, just give them a hand, not a hand out, but a hand. But a, a help, yes. The next phrase is the best Western hotel on Savannah's South Side. The worst nightmare in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the worst nightmare. It was a nightmare that lasted five years. <laughs> uh, I was so thankful to be able to get my start there. Uh, I had been operating the bag lady for a year and a half out of our home. And so the Best Western became empty. And because it was attached to the Best Western, I had to open seven days a week, three meals a day. And Mm -hmm. it was brutal. It was brutal, brutal, (laughs) brutal. (laughs) That's the only word I can think of. Brutal, brutal. okay, (laughs) brutal. (laughs) And the last phrase I have for you is butter. Couldn't live without it. <laughs> you're known. Without. You're known for butter, but butter, butter, y'all. Yes, butter, y'all. Uh, you know, I always say if you're gonna eat that sort of thing, eat the pure. Eat, eat the pure. Uh, I would never personally eat margarine. Uh, I have heard that it's one molecule yes. away from plastic. Yes. That you can put it out and the bugs won't eat it. So if the bugs won't eat it. Uh, we don't need to be eating it. So uh, real butter, real yeah, genuine real butter. butter. And, and not too, too long ago, Amy, uh, on the cover of Time magazine, I think it was Time, there was a huge story, butter won't hurt you. And I said, well, I've been trying to tell you all that for years. It's the pure food. Pure you know, food, that's, pure. that's the pure. important uh, word. But it's like anything else, you know, in moderation. In moderation, uh, because people made the mistake of seeing my show uh, on Food Network, and I did all decadent cooking. Uh, I certainly didn't say, you need to eat this every day. No. Uh, it was for entertainment, and it's for special occasions. You know, it was like for weekend time with your family. You know, you'd want to serve those kind of things or when you'd have in company. So they... They felt like that I must eat that every day, three times a day, just like I cooked on my show. And, of course, it was totally false. <laughs> but that was the theme of your show, so you needed to roll with it, right? Decadent, yes, decadent. Yeah. I, I've got decadent one for you. That, food. I've got a question for you that might be tough, Paula. Okay. What's the best thing you ever ate? <laughs> <laughs> that is Oh, uh-huh. that is What's the so best pretty. thing you ever put in your mouth, Paula Dean? The best thing I ever put in my mouth it was probably my last meal. Uh, <laughs> everything, everything so it's something so that you've cooked. To me. Um, but, oh, my gosh, I, a coconut cake oh, and, yeah, good. and oxtails come to mind. Oxtails. Yes. Oh, in, in soup Michael form or, or, or braised, or how are you doing those, well, those fantastic oxtails? For those of us with little sometimes kitchen Sometimes I cook sense. them on top of the stove, Greg. Uh-huh. But usually I cook them uh, in the oven with not a lot of liquid. Mm-hmm. And, oh, my goodness, I mm-hmm. they almost braised, and they get yeah. so sticky. You know, then, I'm oh, with you. my goodness. Yes, ma'am. Michael and I sit there, and we moan and groan while we suck it on them oxtails. <laughs> And uh, pulling that grizzly fat off of them. Oh, yeah. oh that's oh. yeah. The, the the fat that grizzly fat is the best part of an oxtail, the isn't best it? Best part. People is don't know what they're bone. missing, do they? That little that little bone that comes loose. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, now I've I, I've got another one here because I've got to get some of these these hard hitting questions here, Paula. So be ready. Okay. Okay, I'm ready now. Your hairstyle is pretty much as famous as you are. 
is I want to know who came up with that hairstyle and how long does it take to get your hair looking like that? Like I said, i got to get these hard-hitting questions in. Well, it's, it's so funny, Greg, because uh, the young man that does my hair was at my house at 7 a.m. this morning. And I think I probably started doing my makeup at like 8.30. Oh, wow. So about an hour and a half when I had just gotten out of the shower, so he has to blow it dry and all that. So about an hour and a half. But he's been doing my hair now for 10 or 11, 12 years, and he can probably do it in his sleep. Was the style his, was the style his, or did you come up with that? No, it's pretty much the way he wants to do it. <laughs> you just trust him, huh? If you're going to trust yeah, somebody. Yeah, I, I told him, I said, listen, I want a shag. I want to wear a shag again. And he just acted like I hadn't even said a word. <laughs> and he said, well, we're going to let the top grow out. We're cutting the bottom. We're going to do a stack do. I said, well, okay, do whatever you want to do. Because <laughs> apparently what I want don't matter. <laughs> I, I want to get back, Paula, to another cooking question now because yeah. I, I mentioned to you I'm trying to be a better chef. What is a good macaroni and cheese recipe? We talk about oh, macaroni and cheese on the show sometimes. Oh, my goodness. I made macaroni and cheese Sunday for my family. And not a drop was left over. Uh, How did you, you know make what it? what I did? I made a custard. I made a custard for it. I don't normally do that. But that's not the way we do it at the restaurant. But I had bought this spreadable uh, sharp cheddar cheese. Uh, it was in, like, the cheese and dairy section. Yes. And I thought, hmm, I think I want to try that for my macaroni and cheese. So I did the melted butter, the flour, and a half and half, you know, and I made just a little bit of a custard, and uh, it was one step away from being too thin, you know? Yes. So I put all my cheese in that and poured all that over my macaroni, and uh, I, to me, macaroni and cheese is best made with that uh, old-timey cheddar cheese that comes in the red wax. You can find yes, it. Yes, I, I know that. Shop, okay. You know, I will try those. that. I will try that the next yes. time I make macaroni and cheese. That makes the best. And, of course, uh, canned carnation milk also makes wonderful macaroni and cheese. And I put a couple of eggs in it, and it was so cheesy by the time I put that big old wedge of uh, cheddar cheese in it and about half the container of that spreadable cheddar cheese. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I'm good. thinking uh, a macaroni yeah. and cheese meal yeah, is, is uh, coming yeah. up in our future but, here. You know, I, I probably will not buy that spreadable cheddar again. It tasted a little bit of, like, artificial to me. So I probably won't use that again. But, you know, if, if you want to make macaroni one time and starting off with that custard-like, it's pretty dadgum good, Amy. I will try that. Thank you. Uh, now, pretty dadgum good. Now, you know, we're, we're here in Somerset, Kentucky, and if anybody really wanted to try some Paula Dean food, all they got to do is get in the car, drive right down the road to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, where you've got a brand-new restaurant oh. down there, Paula Dean's Family Kitchen. What, what, what can people expect from that place? Oh, my God. Well, they can expect to wait. <laughs> <laughs> because they are... Uh, Pigeon Forge, thank God for Dolly Parton. Uh, yes. She, she brought, she's done so much good for that area. Uh, the tourists are definitely in town. Uh, so they're in the peak of their tourist season right now. So expect a little wait, but then also expect a meal like you remembered eating at Grandmother's. And the difference there between that restaurant and the restaurant here in Savannah we can serve family style up there. So you tell us what you want off of today's offerings, and we bring it to you in bowls. And, of course, you can have as many refills as you want. And uh, then the dessert tray will come around, and you choose your dessert. Uh, But here in Savannah, they have different health code laws. So we have to do buffet here in Savannah. But it the building we built it from scratch i mean it's just so uh it's state of the art kitchen it's got uh five, almost 5000 square feet of a gift store 
uh, on the first level, and then you take an escalator up to the second floor where the dining room is, and um, you can expect a wonderful meal and a lot of smiling faces. And I can attest to that because my family and I went to Savannah several years ago and tried your buffet. So oh, uh, looking forward to taking a trip to Pigeon Forge to I have the, the dinner-style meal. I can't wait for you to go, Amy. And I want you to get word to me uh, whether you enjoyed it or not. I um, will. I will. Know, and and I hope I hope macaroni and cheese is on the menu. Oh, honey, it's there. <laughs> it's there. Well, Collard well, greens and macaroni and cheese is there, honey, well, pa- every day. Paula, I've enjoyed following you through the years. I think you're a lovely lady, and it's been Thank great to you, talk lady. to you. I do have one final question for you, and we'll turn yes. it over to, to, to Greg. But yes. Uh, you won an Emmy in 2007, a daytime Emmy for Outstanding Lifestyle Host. Yeah. Where, where do you keep your Emmy? I'm always curious well, honey, to where celebrities keep their awards. Where where do you keep that Emmy? I have a special little cabinet, Amy, for my Emmy. Um, oh, my goodness. It's, it's in our den where we watch TV, and uh, it sits right behind the sofa. So I can see it every day because I still don't believe it. <laughs> Eight years later, I still don't believe it. When I jumped up, when they announced my name out there in L.A., I wet all over myself. I was so excited when I jumped up. Well, well I, I said one final that question. Was I, I awful. Ha- I have one more quick question awful. for you. You spend a lot of time uh, in different places across the country. Do you yes. prefer Los Angeles or or? Home in Savannah. Oh, home in Savannah. There's no place like Savannah. I thought so. No place. Now, Paula. Uh, L.A. doesn't almost seem real to me, you know. Uh, I mean, it's fun to visit, and it's always exciting to see who you're going to see just out and about. But, you know, I just, uh, Savannah's just, it's just home. And there ain't no place like home. Well, Paula, I have I have one more question, and maybe a question and a half for you also before we wrap up here, okay? And this okay. question now, this is a question that uh, I I hope is I, I hope is not too personal, and, and and again, you can plead the fifth on this one if you want. Okay. Now, um, in the entertainment business, anybody who's in the entertainment business knows that when that microphone turns on, when that camera turns on, you have to crank everything up a notch you know for that entertainment value and and and, that, and that's what you know being in that business is all about i'm curious how much of paula dean in quotes is you and how much is a character for your show well, what you see is what you get I, I can sense that on the phone today uh-huh. i have very much what sense you that you are legit is, paula dean yes Yes, you know, qu- quite a few years back, about 10 years ago, uh, my husband and I have been married 11 years, and about the time we married, you know, was when my show started, and and we would go out for different things, you know, work, work things, and I told Michael, I said, Michael, I feel like something is... Um, is happening out there. Something's just... I can feel something happening. And I asked him if he could kind of tell me, you know, what was going on. Uh, Because people were just, they were so free with their love. Uh, So free with their love. And it was just, I mean, it was a wonderful feeling. Wonderful, wonderful feeling. Uh, But he said, he said, Paula... To answer your question in one quick statement, he said, um, I think those people know that you're real. They know that you're real, that you're the real deal. And I said, okay, thank you. And I said, I I think I remind them of somebody that has loved them very much in their life, whether it was a grandmother, a mother, an aunt, whatever. But... um, You know, it's been a real gift that I've been given from folks out there that I don't know, uh, have never really met, uh, 
that and they can love somebody like that you know express their love it, it's just been one of the greatest gifts that God has bestowed on me was um the love from people out there well, Paula, you are welcome here in Somerset in Pulaski County. Anytime, you'll have to visit us live in the studio someday. I would love to, Amy. I would love to. Well, um, but what you see is what you get. They got me way too old to try to change <laughs> me. Well, you know, I really I do appreciate 52. that. I, I believe you. I was 52, Greg, when I started, when I stepped in front of a TV camera. So yeah. you, you're, uh, the, you, the leopard doesn't change its spots by that time, does not, it? No, not at, I not at that age. I, I said, had I been 30 years old, maybe it would have impressed me or something. But I had sense enough to know that um, I had been given a gift, being given an opportunity. And, uh, you know, they can go away just like they come. So now I, 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 I was always mindful. I want to say, too, before we wrap up here, because because I have a friend of mine, I would be remiss for for years on and, and off the air, I have referred to you as my girl Paula Dean, y'all. <laughs> and my, I got a friend of mine, I, I got a friend of mine that made me promise him uh, that I would at least bring it up um, th- to see if you would be my date to prom. Yes. Oh, goodness. Are you feeling so <laughs> No. He's 44 <laughs> years old. He's 44 <laughs> years old. Here's, here's how it is, Paula, okay? I graduated high school in 1989. Now, as, as horrific as that was, I am willing to go back if, if, if you will be my prom date. I will. Let me tell you something, y'all. I just went to my 49th class reunion in October. Oh, honey, we danced the night away. It was so much fun. So I'll bust a prom uh, with you. Oh, uh, you are you you are the best, Paula. I Paula, thank you so much for calling in this morning. <laughs> oh, thank y'all so much, and I hope y'all have the most blessed day and um, loving best dishes. <laughs> thank you, Paula. Thank, thank you so much. Thank y'all.